Number one on the list of mistakes I see beginner welders make is setup. There are a ton of different machines and each is set up a little differently. But one common thing between all of them is the correct polarity that needs to be ran for each process. I'm sure you've heard DCEN or DCEP. And so if it's EP, then it's your electrode should be to the positive, EN to the negative. Now we're just dealing with DC or inverter type machines with a DC output. Obviously uh, AC, alternating current, you got the whole wave, you know, it, you don't have to deal with that. Let's not get Tesla involved when not needed. Hooking up flux core, well, it's gonna be your electrode negative. MIG is electro positive. Stick, you can actually run on both depending on the rod, but just keep it simple and stick with positive. You'll be good. And TIG welding is negative. Now you might think it's something really simple and hey, if it works on one process, why wouldn't it work on the other? I'm not gonna dive into the science or how or why, just know it does play a big part and it will heavily affect your weld if it's on the wrong polarity. With the correct polarity, here is just a simple bead. I'm running it, DCEP, and then I'm gonna switch it over to DCEN, exact same settings. You can just tell it doesn't flow right. Number two on the list is material prep. Welds don't like rust or mill scale. Think about it, you're creating an electrical path, mill scale and all that kind of stuff, it impedes that, it creates a barrier, so you're not gonna be able to turn on the light switch, pretty much. So when you go to stick your ground clamp on and you're trying to go through a bunch of rust, if you do get through, it probably will start the arc, but just know you are creating and entering all kinds of porosity oxidation into that weld. If you do get a good bead, I guarantee you underneath, it's not gonna be that great. Hey, you, if you're out in the field or you've got that little fence type uh, fix to do, by all means, it will work, Just it, it will be just fine. Now, this is obviously worst case scenario. I left on the, the thickest part of the rust as I could. This weld, I actually kinda ground down and um, got a good clean, shiny surface, got a great weld out of that. Just extreme cases to show you what you can and can get with going through rust. Number three is weld settings. Now, this probably does play the biggest factor in how your weld turns out. So by all means, the biggest and easiest thing I can tell you to help you out is go off the suggested settings on the machine. Now, I'm not just saying that just as an easy cop-out, just follow the settings and you're good, because even following settings for the machine that it was designed for, you still gotta, gotta play around with it a little bit. But what I do suggest is go with the settings as a baseline. The great thing with some machines are, for example, if you go with a stick welder, you've only gotta deal with one thing, it's the amperage. You know what, I'm not even gonna get into TIG welding because that is definitely a process that there are tons of different settings and features that you can dive into. So let's, let's not bog ourselves down with this. Either way, uh, Flux and MIG, they do introduce a couple of different settings. You know, instead of just amperage, you get wire speed and voltage. It's kind of the two main ones for these guys. Just know uh, wire speed and voltage do kind of coincide together. As you turn up one, you're gonna turn up the other just as you're going up in thickness of material. Don't be like me and not read the manuals. You know, every machine is a little different and it would take forever to go through settings on every machine. So even though I've actually done that for this guy, either way, other video, right? Just as some very common issues, if the weld is small and heaped up on itself, it's you're too low. If it is flat and you're starting to burn through the material, you're too hot, turn it down. Number four, you can't even see your weld. Starting out, you know, with some of the cheapest machines, they come with these little face masks. If you've seen my other videos, you know I just toss them. They're not worth it. Board the wire toothbrush. And that's because as you're sitting trying to weld, your other hand, you gotta hold this thing up trying to see your weld. It takes away from your ability to control. Second, it takes away from being able to see because they all come with these uh, little lenses. They're called a fixed shade lens. So it's just, you know, black all the time. And usually it's a darker shade. So even when you do get to welding, it's still really dark. So I'm just, Telling you right now, 
Forget about this and pick up an auto darkening helmet. Okay, twofold on this. Auto darkening, it does exactly what it says. It auto darkens once it sees the actual arc of the weld. So it just allows you to be able to see your weld before you're, you know, as you're getting it ready, before you pull the trigger. Once you pull the trigger or you strike the arc, it changes automatically, it darkens, so then you can continue seeing that weld as you go on. Okay, so let's say you're all set up, you've got the helmet and everything, and it's still just, it's really hard to get in there and focus on that puddle as you're moving along. Here's probably the second best tip I can give you. My buddy Jesse uh, gave me a bunch of these little LED lights that are super bright, and it's amazing how well these work. You either attach these to the helmet or you just put it right back behind you somewhere. I'll put a link to them. I think that Amazon probably has 5,000 that you can choose from. Pick up a light, pick up an auto darkening helmet, and you're set. Last on the list is too complex of a part. I'm telling you right now, lots of people just think, hey, I'll pick up a welder and go do my titanium exhaust. And contrary to what YouTube or TikTok might make you think, welding does take practice. Now I do have another video out there showing just a very simple first project for you. It's just square tubing, it's a great first project. It shouldn't be your very first weld. Your first weld should actually be just on a flat piece of plate. It's called a bead on plate. All you're doing is just making a lot of little runs. One to two inches, that's it. Once you get that down, then move up to the fillet weld, your corner joints, that kind of stuff. And don't think that it's the machine. Yes, this weld right here, which was done with flux core and the titanium 125, one of the cheapest machines out there. Hopefully I can give you some of the little practices or things that I've done to change to be able to get some good looking welds. That's all I got for this one. I'm Mechmaster. We'll see you next time.